Okay, what we're going to be doing uh, in a minute, um, we're going to take a little tiny flexible scope with a little just a tip, and we're going to be looking with the scope via Daniel's nose right along past his soft palate down to his vocal folds. And we'll be looking and seeing what his larynx and the muscles around the larynx, the muscles in the pharynx, actually do and how they contribute to the sound that Daniel makes. Okay, ready? Mm. Here we go. Lower the lights, please, just for a sec. Okay, lift your head up for me. Let me know if there's any discomfort. You may just feel a little tiny something at the very beginning because the nose is just a little bit narrow at the very beginning. So this is the edge of the nose. We see that Daniel has a little septal spur which I'm going to go around. We're inside the left side of the nose. There's the inferior turbot on our right. Now say he he. original so nice. recording that Fantastic. we've done in a long time. <laughs> Fantastic. Jeez. Very good. Right. That was mental. <laughs> so what we see here, this is the back of your tongue. This is your epiglottis, which actually protects the vocal folds when you swallow. Yeah. But also is used in certain sounds, particularly in twang. Uh, and this whole structure in here is the larynx. <laughs> What you see here is basically the vocal folds closing and opening. You see, here's the vocal yeah. folds. Well, here's the vocal yeah. folds widely open, uh -huh. and we can actually see down the windpipe. So you were probably taking a quick breath in, and then when you did the vroom vroom sound, mm -hmm. you probably had your vocal folds closed and constricted, and we're pulling your 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 your, your, your yeah. whole tongue and that. back of the pharynx down yeah. to create that sound. You can see here that the base of the tongue is working terribly, terribly hard most of the time, quite consistently. You're pulling it right back. What's also interesting is that the arytenoids, which support the vocal folds, and I saw that a few times, are slightly asymmetrical. This is the right side, and it's actually working harder than the left side. There's actually some scissoring that's going on there uh -huh. as you're bringing one vocal fold in more than the other one, probably to create a little bit more, more effort at some times. And that's not normal, is it? Well, it's, it's, it's a variant of normal. Uh -huh. And what we also see here is that the vocal folds are held quite close together, so there's a lot of muscular activity bringing the back of the larynx, the arytenoids, towards the epiglottis, towards the front of the larynx, squeezing everything together there. So yeah. it could be in you a feature of, yeah. you know, musculoskeletal tension that you're using in order to produce some of the sounds. I, I'm sure it is. Yeah. yeah. With that sound, there's not much use of the vocal folds, no. I don't think. Quite a lot of the lips and intraoral pressure. Yeah. That's you were, what you yeah. And you were breathing fairly quietly at the level of the vocal folds. So that, that kind of maneuver is actually quite safe from the point of view, from a laryngeal point of view. One of the first things that I think we can say clearly is that there's a lot of supraglottic activity. Uh, that means above the vocal folds with a lot of a lot of squeezing of the lateral pharyngeal wall, a lot of use of the constrictor muscles, a lot of use of the tongue base musculature, mm -hmm. a lot of use of the muscles that, that are used for swallowing. Looking at Daniel's larynx, I didn't see any evidence of damage to the larynx. So certainly to date, there's nothing on this examination that suggests that anything that Daniel has done has been harmful to his vocal folds.